All hail the victory of the people's struggle against apartheid in South Africa. All those who were involved, the martyrs, the prisoners, the exiles, the strugglers down on the street, large and small people, famous and unknown people who gave oftentimes their life's blood in order to free all of humanity from the scourge of apartheid. So I'm not here to mourn the passing of Archbishop Desmond Tutu at the age of 90 overnight in the Republic of South Africa that he fought hard in his own way to free and to make a multiracial innovation experiment which will in time make South Africa the greatest of all African countries. Of that, I am sure. I had political differences with Archbishop Desmond Tutu, but the time that I spent in the 1980s, undercover sometimes in South Africa, working as an agent for the African National Congress and its leader, the then prisoner Nelson Mandela, is amongst the proudest chapters of my life. I never met Archbishop Tutu, but I felt him. I felt him in the townships of Soweto and Gugoletto. I felt him in the hatred of the Boers and their police and paramilitary forces uh, that uh, on one occasion memorably chased me into the township of Gugoletto, trapped me, dragged me into a police station and induced me to give blood some of my blood from my nose on the floor of their apartheid police station. I could feel uh, the fear of the Boers and their security apparatus, uh, that they knew that the people's struggle for freedom in South Africa was going to win, and win indeed we did. Archbishop Tutu led a wonderful life. He is now, I'm sure, in heaven. He will be remembered forever for the part that he played in the defeat of the hateful fascistic idea of racial separation. May it as an idea burn in hell forever. And insofar as it is practiced anywhere now in the 21st century, may it soon pass. And may those who struggle against it also be victorious. I'm proud of the role that I played, though I have now political differences, quite serious ones, with the government of the African National Congress, the ANC, uh, but I'm still proud to have been with them, to have been one of them during that epic struggle. Uh, the tide of history eventually, unstoppably, comes in and it came in for the apartheid system. It swept them all away and it changed everything forever. It hasn't changed life for the people in South Africa nearly enough. The corrupt coterie uh, that has affixed itself to the former revolutionary caste of the African National Congress is condemnable and oftentimes repugnant. I have met people uh, that I knew uh, when their backside was hanging out of their trousers, who now have many tens, maybe hundreds of millions of dollars in their bank accounts. I want nothing to do with that. I want to see the liberation of the people of South Africa complete when equality, economic, equality becomes far more of a reality than what we see today. But I have no hesitation at all, despite my political differences with Archbishop Tutu, of saluting his memory today. But neither can I forswear the opportunity, the responsibility to point at the hypocrites whose syrup is even now gushing over the memory of Desmond Tutu. Because I'm so old, 
I remember when some of these same people, certainly the same institutions, were denouncing the Archbishop as a mouthpiece for the terrorists of the African National Congress, the leading terrorist being Nelson Mandela himself. For younger viewers and listeners, this may come as a surprise, but Britain, the United States, most of the European countries, the so-called much vaunted international community were all on the side of apartheid in South Africa. White rule in South Africa was their cause right up until the very moment when it was ready to crash down. It's important that you know that. I saw Mrs. Thatcher's lips moving and I heard her voice speaking when she described Nelson Mandela as nothing other than a terrorist. And the rest of us were therefore communists or friends of terrorism. This is important for you to know. And when Keir Starmer, the Labour leader, today poured out his honeyed words, it's important that you know that if Desmond Tutu had been a member of Keir Starmer's Labour Party, he would have been expelled from it, as indeed would Nelson Mandela have had to be expelled from it. Why so? Because both Mandela and Tutu repeatedly and powerfully pointed out that whilst apartheid in South Africa is dead, in Israel, Palestine, it is not dead. Whilst boycott, divestment, and sanctions speeded the day of the downfall of apartheid in South Africa, so it would be necessary to bring about an end to the suffering of the Palestinian people under illegal occupation. Both Mandela and Tutu described almost daily Israel as an apartheid state. If you did that in Keir Starmer's Labour Party, you would be expelled. So desist, you hypocrites like Keir Starmer and others, in your appreciation of the noble, historic, heroic work of the late Archbishop Utu, to whom I raise my hat. And the last thing I want to say in my monologue is about the issue of the coronavirus. Last week, my monologue gained hundreds of thousands of views, and some people expressed surprise at what they imagined to be a change of mind on my part. But that isn't true and shouldn't have surprised you. I've been against mandatory vaccinations and vaccination passports from the beginning. But I'm not one of the a tinfoil hat brigade that denies the existence of the coronavirus, imagines that it's like the cold or the flu, pretends that vaccination won't help stop you from dying. I am a support, I am triple vaccinated. But when facts change, so do my opinions. Don't you? change your opinions when the facts change. And here are the facts that I gave you last week and have been amply vindicated over the last seven days. Omicron is the variant we've been waiting for. Omicron is the variant that spreads wider, but far less lethally. 70% less likely to put you in the intensive care unit in the hospital. And so I'm still in favor 
of taking every sensible precaution. I stand four square against any further lockdowns because the cost of further lockdowns, not just economically, but to the mental health of the nation, to the social cohesion of the nation, will be far, far greater than any good that they might or would do. So when Boris Johnson weighs things up and issues his pronunciamento tomorrow, I very much hope that it will not be a back to the future order to lock down British society again, because if it is, the British will rise up against it. They will not obey it. They will not follow it. And great harm will thus be caused to our people and to the social cohesion of our country. So be sensible, take precautions, don't run up to people in the street and kiss them with your tongue in their mouth. Don't gather in big congregations that you don't need to, but try and live a life that's worth living in 2022.